Well, g'day, flatties and globe defenders. This is Critical Think from Down Under. Yes, it's been a while since my last video. I'm sorry about the wait, but I have been very busy and I will continue to uh, be busy. So sorry about the wait. Uh, before we begin the video proper, this picture here is a picture of sunrise over Brisbane City. I took this a couple of years ago at least. And there's two clues in there that uh, point to the fact the Earth cannot be flat. And I'll let you just discover those for yourselves. Now, at the end of last year, I went on to Brandon's show and I showed this picture, which is more evidence that the Earth cannot be flat, which shows a sunrise from Woody Point and uh, there's a drop to the horizon and the sun is also below eye level. Two things that are impossible on a flat earth. But of course, we get the same old it's due to perspective argument. So it led to me trying to explain how perspective works. Yes, I know this sounds a bit strange, but let's just listen to some of the things from the show. When you look out and see the world, you're seeing a 2D representation, a, a, a perspective-based visual view of the world. You are representing that in this Euclidean physical space orthographic diagram. You're mixing the two up. I can calculate the exact angular size of something given the distance. This From this diagram, it represents reality. I can calculate something. I can take a camera, take a picture, and it will agree with my calculations exactly. So it is a representation of reality. Hold on. He, he said he could predict how small something was going to get with distance, but after seeing Travis's pictures yesterday, I'm not so sure that he could. Perspective and orthographic. Easily convert, perfectly convert between perspective and orthographic. That's what you guys say, yeah. I can place my camera and tell you what a photo would look like. Yeah, I have been asking view. for that. I have been asking for that from your side for two years. So, a fundamental misunderstanding by Flat Earthers is that an orthographic view does not show perspective. Um, flat Earthers want to draw something in the distance as smaller, because that's what it looks like when you take a picture. But this is not reality. An orthographic view does represent reality, because I, in this diagram, for example, I have three stakes, six, six and six, feet high, 20 meters apart. Now, these sticks don't actually get smaller. We do not have to draw them smaller because what makes them smaller in a photograph is their angular size. And I've tried to explain this, but it's falling on deaf ears. So the angles A, B and C represent the different angular sizes of these sticks. So angular size of A is bigger than B, is bigger than C, and that's what makes them appear differently in size. You don't have to draw them differently. They're all appearing there to be different angular sizes so that when you take a picture from where that device is there, then they're going to appear smaller as they get further away because of this reduction in angular size. So flat earthers want to draw perspective into an orthographic view. They want to draw things in the distance smaller, but this is not the correct way. And also, they want to draw that the clouds come down towards the ground. This is not correct either. The clouds don't move. This is like something that a child would draw. It's, it's, it's a misunderstanding of how it works. You don't draw the clouds going onto the ground. They don't move. If you were to draw that and draw your lines to the clouds, you would see that the angle to the clouds changes, hence they appear to come down. And they don't actually go down. And uh, they've also used this diagram to somehow make the sun go below eye level when the sun is high above us. So if the earth were flat, 
Uh, no matter, I mean, you can try and draw it, but that's not reality. The sun cannot go below eye level if the earth were flat. So in terms of uh, Polaris and a flat earth, if we were at the uh, latitude 45, we would see Polaris at 45 degrees. Now on a flat earth, that would mean that Polaris was 5,000 kilometers in the sky. Now, as we move to the equator, we should be seeing it at something like this angle. But we don't see it at that angle, we see it at zero. And flat earthers say that this is because of perspective. But perspective is already included in this diagram that somehow they want to claim that trigonometry is broken over a distance. And this, again, shows Polaris moving in space down, which is an incorrect interpretation. Uh, so this is how a flat earther will rationalize that Polaris can appear to be at zero degrees because of some mythical properties of perspective. So Brandon recently also reaffirmed this claim that we cannot work out the height of objects if we know their angular elevation and horizontal distance to them. So flat earthers say it's impossible to work out how something would look like given the distance and uh, size or angular elevation. You can swap between, the, we, between perspective and orthographic view quite easily, but flat earthers say you cannot. So here's a summary of these flat earth confusion and claims. Now I know that this will be a bit of contention in the comments because flat earthers will say, oh, you misrepresented our claims. And then uh, somebody else will say, well, what are your claims? And then they'll say, oh, well, if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you. So anyway, despite the danger of uh, creating uh, silliness in the discussion, I'm going to list these claims. So the claim is orthographic views don't represent reality. Orthographic views don't show perspective. And you can't calculate the angular size from an orthographic view. Trigonometry doesn't work over a distance. And objects move because of perspective. So, as with my three stick, this is only a short distance. And I could put three sticks in the ground and measure it. But then the argument would come up, but does this work over a distance of miles? I mean, I could show it works over 40, 50 feet. But then, then flat earthers would say, ah, but it doesn't work over a distance. So I'm going to test this over a distance. But first, let's remind ourselves of one thing. A flat earther could never have invented this because a flat earther doesn't understand optics. Fuck off, you prick. What a... Oh. <laughs> you what an absolute prick. We understand optics very well, thank you very much. So here's a, a picture of a ship at a distance of 12.1 kilometers. Now I'm not, the ship is, now the ship is not over the horizon, so it doesn't matter here whether the earth is curved or flat. This is just a demonstration of how perspective works, how we can convert orthographic views, to angular size, etc., etc. So this is not about flat versus globe. This is about how perspective works. And because the mathematics behind it is fundamental to determining if the Earth is flat or globe. If you can't get the mathematics right and the concepts right, well then you've got no hope of distinguishing the two. This particular photo was taken in September last year and uh, you can see it is a focal length of 234mm with a Coolpix P1000. So here's the ship and the stats on the ship. They don't actually give the height, they only give the length and breadth. And this is its position on that day and you can see a 6.54 nautical miles out which is about 12.1 
kilometers. So we aren't given the height of the ship, but we can work it out. There's a couple of ways we can work it out. If you can get a good side on shot, you can get use the uh, width of the ship as a ruler. But in this case, we've got other clues, like there are containers on the ship and they're 2.9 meter containers. So we've got a stack of four of them here and they, they take up 171 pixels in this picture. The ship from the waterline to the very top there is 710 pixels. So the height of the ship is 710 divided by 141 by 4 by 2.9. So that works out at 48.2 meters. So we know the height of the ship. Then we can work out what its angular size should be. So we know the distance in our orthographic view, 12.1 kilometers. We know the height, 48.2. So the angular size of the ship is 0 0.228 degrees. Now, if we take a photo, that's what we should see. The ship should occupy 0 0.228 degrees. Due to perspective, it will be small. 0 0.228 degrees small. So here's a bit of an optics lesson for flat earth proponents. A camera has a field of view which is determined by its focal length. Now if we also know the sensor size, we can actually calculate the field of view in the camera in degrees. And we do this, the sensor size is known because you can look that up. The focal length is known, I've got it from the metadata for the picture, and therefore this angle A, which is the field of view of the picture, can be calculated. So just a reminder, there's 710 pixels uh, represents the height of the ship, and this 710 pixels we're saying should be 0 0.228 degrees. So that's this calculation at the top. From our orthographic view, we're saying that the angular size is 0 0.228 degrees. So it has shrunk to that size due to perspective. Now taking the picture from our measured angular size, the photo has a 234 millimeter zoom, which is the same thing as focal length. The pixel height in the photo is 3456 pixels. The ship is 710 pixels. The P1000 sensor height is 4.55 millimeters. So we work that out using that field of view equation. And from top to bottom of the picture is 1.11 degrees. Now the ship is only 710 pixels out of 3456. So the ship occupies 0 0.228 degrees. So the photo matches the reality, matches the orthographic view, matches the calculation of perspective. It all matches reality. So as you can see, we can calculate these sticks as to how they would appear in a photo by knowing this angle here. And you can convert between the two. So if you know the distance and the size of something, you can work out what the angle is and then you can use that to calibrate other things in a picture. The orthographic view is a representation of reality and I could do this over a short distance, but of course flat earthers would say that it doesn't work over a long distance. So I did it over a long distance. So long distance over water, the angular size matches what we calculated it should be based on an orthographic projection. So, to summarize, the orthographic views do represent reality. They show perspective. You can calculate how big something is from an orthographic view. If you look at it from a further away, you can calculate the angular size, which gives it, which gives it um, how it will appear in a photograph. Trigonometry works over a distance of several miles. If we realize that the orthographic view is a representation of reality, then the sun cannot possibly move from being above your head 
to being below eye level. It just can't happen. Objects don't move because of perspective. Well, that's all. Thanks for watching. I hope I can get back to doing another video sometime soon.